This video is brought to you by the Glasgow University Charity Fashion Show. This year we're raising money for Refugee, a brilliant charity based here in Glasgow, who aim to welcome and integrate new refugees into the city. If you want to find out more or donate, be sure to click the link in the description and it will give you all the information you need. What's up, I'm saying it's your boy Summoners World back again. I'm here today in Southland on Sea and in today's video we're going to be heading out there. 1.3 miles into the sea on the Southland Pier Railway and you're going to be joining me. Welcome to Southland on Sea, home to the world's longest pleasure pier. The pier extends a hefty 1.33 miles out into the Thames estuary and it's here where you can find the Southland Pier Railway, a unique rail system that carries passengers along the length of the pier day in, day out. The current pier is the second version of a pier here. The first was opened in June 1830 at a length of 130 meters, at only 0.11 miles in length, but was extended twice in 1834 and 1846. From 1848, the pier was regarded as the longest in Europe at 1.30 miles. In 1851, a horse tramway began to transport people and goods down the pier. In comes 1855. The London, Tilbury and South End Railway, the line run by C2C nowadays, had just reached South End, and it made it much easier for keen holidaymakers from London to reach the coast. With this large influx of potential visitors, a new pier was built, which opened in 1889. With the new pier came a new pier railway. As it got to 1930, the railway now shuttled four trains with seven cars each down a double track system. World War II came through, which meant the pier and the railway were close to the public and it was transferred to the Royal Navy. Following the war, the railway and the pier reopened to the public and four new trains came into service in 1949. At this time, patronage along the pier was booming. Around 6 million people visited the pier in the year, much more than what was seen before the war. However, this wasn't to last for too long. Fires in 1959 and 1976, mixed in with the rise in popularity of overseas package holidays, meant the pier and the railway were eventually left to ruin. South End Council intended to close the pier in September 1980, but protests led to a rescue package proposed with a local company, which meant that following 18 months of work and procurement of two new trains and £1.5 million spent, the system reopened in 1986. These trains from 1986 still survive nowadays and take passengers down the now mostly single track between Shore Station and Pier Head Station. When I visited, trains were running every half an hour. It's normally every 15 minutes during peak season. I paid £2.60 for a walk and ride ticket, which meant that I could take the train one way, then walk the other way. At the visitor centre, there's also a small pier museum, which I, unfortunately, didn't get the chance to visit when I was there. The trains have aged, but they're still in good nick, even 35 years later. The journey takes about 10 minutes to get between the two stations, with a max speed of 10 miles per hour in certain sections. The views as the train glides away from the mainland on a clear and sunny day are amazing, honestly. It's kind of fun to crawl past people walking along. To walk down the pier takes about 30 minutes at a leisurely pace. The walk really makes you realise how long 1.33 miles is. Once you reach Pierhead Station, you're greeted with the regular pier attractions. Fish and chips and ice cream vendors, some nice seating, games here and there and more. Oh my days, we are so far away from land I literally look behind me. We are actually so far out. Look at the views, look at the views. When I visited, not all attractions at the Pierhead were open at the time, including the RNLI lifeboat station and the Royal Pavilion. Interestingly enough, you're able to buy a fishing pass, bring your rod and bait, and see what you can catch. As I've already mentioned, the trains here are 35 years old. 
new trains are actually on their way and the first of two new electric trains built by Warwickshire based company Seven Lamb have recently been delivered and are being assembled and tested as of October 2021. The trains were supposed to be in service in July 2021, but a fault with the paint on the trains meant they had to be disassembled, repainted and reassembled before testing again. It will surely be nice to ride on them when they come into service. We can't forget about the old trains though. Luckily, a couple of coaches will still be used at the pier head as a shelter with seating once the new trains come in. You see, I'm giving myself the delight of walking 1.3 miles back to land. Anyway, if you like the video, make sure you drop a like, drop a comment what you want to see in the future, subscribe, and I'll see you in a bit. It's been your boy Summon Explores, and I'll catch you in the next video.